we started a number of Brazilian-French collaborations in this period that gave many fruits, and he's going to tell us something about this in his talk today, which is uh, called Dimension One Foliations on Projective Manifolds. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Carolina. Uh, so, I, my goal today is to try to uh, give an idea of uh, what is happening on this field of foliation theory. I will not try to be exhaustive. So I have uh, done a quite biased selection of uh, topics. And uh, that's the object we are studying. These are foliations. These are the composition of manifolds in uh, submanifolds. And uh, they can be uh, studied in different categories, in the analytic category, then continuous, measurable. Uh, but uh, today, my focus will be on the algebraic category. So I want to study algebraic foliations. So these objects are defined on algebraic varieties. And uh, these algebraic, uh, so these are obje objects that we are defined by means of integrable algebraic distribution. So for me, an algebraic variety, or for everyone, I guess, is just a stock topological space, locally model over zero sets of families of polynomials. Algebraic distributions are uh, collections of uh, subspaces of the tangent space of these algebraic varieties. And uh, this is some kind of a cartoon version of a uh, distribution, but we also want them to be integrable. So this is an example of a non-integrable distribution. So uh, for an integrable distribution, it's when these objects are closed on the Lie bracket. So if we take a vector field, uh, tangent to a distribution, we ask two vector fields, we ask that the Lie bracket is still tangent to the same distribution. Over the complex numbers? Over the complex numbers, yes. Uh. <laughs> and uh, so over the complex numbers, or over the real numbers, uh, these objects are locally defined by submersions. So they are, uh, and it can draw a very simple picture. So locally, uh, the theory, at least over the complex number in the analytic category, is a theory which is locally trivial. So uh, these objects, these distributions will be always uh, locally level sets of submersions. And uh, as I'm going to uh, study then in the algebraic category, it seems reasonable to try to look at perhaps the simplest possible examples. So these are the co-dimension one, foliations on projected spaces. And so these are algebraic distributions that, as I said, are algebraically defined. So they can be defined by one forms with polynomial coefficients. And I can even give global expressions for them so they are uh, homogeneous one forms on CN plus one, which are annihilated by the radial vector field, so they descend to the projected space. And this Frobenius integrability condition, now it's very simple to write down, it's just the omega where the omega equals zero. One very basic invariant of these uh, objects is the degree. So the degree of a projective foliation is just the number of tangencies with a general line so we are on Pn, we have, can take a line, and we can try to see how the foliation intersects this line. So if the line is generically, the distribution will be generically transverse to the line, but then there will be a certain number of tangencies, and these tangencies, the number of these tangencies is the degree of this object. So here we see uh, degree two. And to have an idea, so I, I want to study these objects. These are ob objects which have a very uh, rich nature. So they can uh, be seen as a, a kind of dynamical system. They can then see as a geometric object. But they also can be seen as an algebraic object. And so to, if we try to look at them at this, as, as an algebraic object, it seems natural to see and to understand uh, what these conditions mean omega wedge d omega equals zero. And uh, let me just mention that to have an idea of the complexity of the problem, let's stick to the case of P3 
and let us look uh, what is happening in degree zero. So these are, we are talking about six variables. So this equation omega wedge d omega lies in an affine space with six variables. And uh, oh my, so this is the right, this is the wrong, uh, this is the wrong slide. So the number of, of equations is one, not four. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, if, if you go to degree one, we are, we are going to have uh, 20 variables and the number of equations 10. And we, and we can continue counting. And so degree two, 45 variables, 35 equations. Degree three, 84 variables, 84 equations. And we can even give a general formula for this, uh, for this number of variables and number of equations. And so uh, you can, one problem that you can try to look is to look at these systems of equations and try to describe the reducible components, the reducible components of the zero locus of them. Okay? And so, as you guess, in degree zero, things are not very hard. So in degree zero, it's, uh, I can even explain to you uh, very succinctly what is the foliation of degree zero in P3? So we have this distribution. So let's just draw here one uh, tangent plane of this distribution. And I can choose one tangent direction in it. And as we are in P3, through every point and every given direction, there is a line. But wait, since the degree zero, the number of tangencies uh, is uh, zero. But now I'm building this line to be tangent to the distribution at a given point. So this means that this line must be contained in uh, one of these, or at least locally, must be contained in one of these level sets. And moving the line around through the tangent plane, we, move, we show that this level set, this local level set given by the local submersion, globalized to give a hyperplane, a P2 inside P3. And that's what happens when we look at all the possible solutions of this differential equation. We will form this foliation, which is just a pencil of hyperplanes intersecting in a given line. The line will be the singular set of the foliation. I didn't uh, stress the fact that now we are allowing singularities. Uh, we are allowing zeros for this one form. So these submersions are not everywhere defined, even locally. Okay, so this is Seems, does, doesn't seem very surprising, so this is the one equation. Some, somehow, uh, hidden here is the Plucker's equation for uh, the, uh, the Grassmannian of lines in P3. So that's what we are seeing. Essentially, the space of foliations of degree zero is parameterized by lines in P3, the base locus of these pencils. And so we can go to degree one, and degree one, this history is more interesting. So it's, uh, it's Juan Lu, somehow inspired by old works of Darbu who uh, described completely the, the irreducible components of this place of, of the space of foliations of degree one. So this is, uh, they say that you have two components. And these are components which will appear in other situations. So let me just say that they, they have two of them. So one is built in the following way. Following way. So we start with a foliation on P2 of degree one. And uh, you are on P3, you choose a, a point, and you do a, a central projection through that point and use that to pull back your foliation. So the foliation just comes from P2 by means of a, a linear projection. So the leaves are now this analytic continuation of the level sets of the local submersions. We call them leaves, are cones over this vertex. And this form one irreducible component. And the other irreducible component which appears is just that there are these uh, foliations defined by this, the logarithmic one forms, closed logarithmic one forms. So, this is this. so L is, is here is just a linear form. In order to descend to projective space, we have to ask them to, to satisfy the residue theorem, so the sum of residues must be uh, zero. Okay, so this is what we call log, the reducible component log one, one, one. This is just because uh, these guys have degree one. 
Very good. And so we had to wait uh, almost 20 years to see what happens in uh, degree two. And this is a very, very beautiful paper by Servo uh, and Nisneto. Somehow played a, a great influence in my, in my work. And they succeed in describing the reducible components of the space of foliations of degree two. And uh, they give a list. I've tried to explain more carefully what, which are, how each one of these components are. So let's, this S2N is just, this case, the linear pullback from P2. R22, R13, are, this R22 are pencil of quadrics. And uh, R13 is a pencil of cubics with one triple hyperplane. L111 and L112 are logarithmic components like that. And EN is what they call the exceptional component. Uh, so here is a picture of the, all of them done by Brent Pin. And uh, let me mention that uh, this work is the, well, according to MassiNet, I checked it last week, perhaps it's already changed. They had 15 joint paper, this is one is the number five. <coughs> and just to give an idea of the complexity of the objects that we are looking at, in this space of foliations, the space of coefficients of the one form omega, these are algebraic varieties and they have these degrees. This is uh, the work by Weinsenker and his students and collaborators. So R22 has degree 1430, uh, R13 is 700, S23 1320, and uh, for the logarithmic component, it's unknown, and for this ex exceptional component, it's, wow, uh, 1006, well, 168208. Right, so this is just to, to, to say that this is an, a wild problem. Even if you can imagine just putting everything in the computer and then let the computer do the job for you and the let the computer tell you which are the components, uh, this is, uh, seems to be hard, right? Because this, it's so complicated. So let me give you an idea of how they did it. So the, the idea is very simple and beautiful. So they just, well, you have this foliation on P3 and you just take a general hyperplane. You take a general P2 and you can ask if this general P2 will have simple tangency with one of the leaves, if they will have an isolated tangency with one of the leaves. So it may happen that no. It may happen that any leaf, the tangents will be non-isolated. This picture never happens. So what does that mean? That means that uh, every single leaf have the generate Gauss map. So the Gauss map, which is the map which associated to a point of a subvariety, its tangent space, will be constant along this line of tangencies. And then uh, you get to the study of developable surfaces, which we heard about uh, in the Chen's talk of Monday. And uh, I don't know who, who, who proved this, uh, the, the classification. And essentially, uh, there is these uh, examples of tangents to curves the tangential surface to curves, but there are also these degenerate examples which are cones over a point. And let, let me just do a brief digression since in the Monday we also heard about uh, congruences, which are uh, association of lines through a point on P3, and these uh, fibers of the Gauss map of the foliation will define a foliation by line, a congruence of first order uh, on the projective three-dimensional space. And this is a uh, result which has, uh, has been founded and refounded many, many times in the literature. So the, I first heard about this result uh, in this paper of Servo in 2009, where he classified the foliation by lines. But indeed, it was already known to Kummer. It was rediscovered in 86 by Ran, and you can uh, add uh, many, many, many to the lists, uh, authors to the list. Anyway, when uh, we are not in this situation, we can do the following. We, uh, they did the following. So they uh, somehow observed. So the, now we are in the situation where you have tangency, right? 
So what happens is that this foliation will define, we will look into the restriction of the foliation on P2. And since I had this simple tangency, what I'm going to see here on P2 is a point, let's just, uh, let me draw, allow me to draw the real picture, right? So it will be a point surrounded by small circles. And so this is this uh, center. And uh, a miracle happens. When you have a center like that, if you have a foliation on P2 of degree 2 with a center, somehow the algebraic equations, the algebraic conditions imposed by the existence of this center implies, somehow by a miracle, the existence of an invariant line. And then putting this line at infinity, what you get is a quadratic vector field on C2. So this was a subject of a beautiful paper of Dulac, who succeeded in describing all the irreducible components of the varieties of quadratic vector fields which admit a center. And so somehow putting together these two classification results, this classification of foliations with degenerated Gauss map and classification of uh, vector fields on C2 with center singularities, uh, they succeed in uh, uh, proving the previous result. Okay? Very good. And, well, we, you can try to generalize this in many ways, and uh, I'm afraid to say that it's very unlikely that these methods will succeed. So already there is a beautiful, very interesting paper. Uh, I don't, it's a shame, but I don't remember the authors. Uh, but where they study the problem of centers for cubic vector fields on C3. And they tried to write down the equations, and they did not fit in the memory of their computer. So do a similar classification for cubic vector fields. There were attempts to do that by Zoladek, but uh, I think it's a very, very, very hard problem, perhaps even harder than there were the other problems. But anyway, Another way that you can, that this subject evolved is try to understand in more intrinsic terms what is happening. So what we are looking at exactly, it's just an uh, equation of degree two or a foliation of degree two, or it ha does it have some intrinsic meaning? So uh, to do that, let me just uh, put two technical definitions which are not important. So for a foliation, for for most of us who work on the subject, it's a sub-sheave of the tangent sheave, closer than the Lie bracket. And uh, the, somehow, one of the main protagonists of the history in these days is the canonical bundle of the foliation, which is uh, the sheave or the vector bundle of differential forms of top degree along the leaves. And there is this whole philosophy which starts with the uniformization theorem which says that these uh, objects should uh, govern the, the, the properties of this object, the property of the canonical bundle should govern the geometry of varieties. And here we extrapolate this, uh, this idea and, say, and think that this object should also govern the geometry of uh, uh, foliations. So just to, to try to be concrete, is that where the motivation comes from? We can look at this canonical bundle look at the bundle of top differential forms along the leaves, and if this bundle is negative in the sense that it has no sections, it's very unlikely to have sections. We, uh, in the case of curves, we are in the case of a sphere, and in the case of foliations, we are in the foliations of degree zero and one, which we described. And uh, when they have trivial canonical bundle, they, we are talking about foliations on P3 of degree two, the ones just described by by Lins Neto and uh, by Servo and Lins Neto, and uh, in the case of curves, we are on tori, and the positive canonical bundle is the hyperbolic word, it's all the rest. Very good. So, keeping in mind that your positivity or negativity properties of the canonical bundle should imply strong constraints on the geometry of the foliation, you can, you can ask how this, how this goes. And uh, the first result, indeed, uh, so 
I, I have to say that this subject of co-dimension one foliations is essentially a French Brazilian subject. So it's uh, done by uh, a few guys here at IMPA, a few guys in Han. There are also some collaborations from Mexico, from Spain, but from this global point of view, description of co-dimension one foliations, it's really a French Brazilian thing. But somehow foliations are, uh, I, I, I believe that they are central objects in algebraic geometry. So they appear in many, many situations. So one situation which were, they were very important is was in the classification of three-dimensional projective varieties. So there is this uh, very influential paper of uh, Miyaoka called The Formation of Amorphism in the Longer Foliation, which uh, somehow look at the tangent shiva foliation, assume that it has some positivity property. I don't want to enter in, in, into details, so that's from that part of the paper, let's just keep this assumption, some positivity of the tangent sheave, so somehow like positive curvature in certain directions, positivity of the Ricci curvature if you are a geometer. And then from that, he deduced uh, unruled of, of leaves. So somehow he could not prove that the leaves were algebraic, but he proved that through every point of every single leaf, there is a rational curve, an algebraic curve containing a leaf. And this is a really wonderful paper with a ton of ideas. And uh, as I mentioned, this is really important in, in the classification theory, in the Morris theory for three-dimensional varieties. So one idea that is in this paper is that we should study the formation of morphisms along foliations. What's that? So, so I have a foliation, so here's my foliation. And suppose that I choose a curve. And uh, what he proposed to do is to look at the following. Suppose that this curve has a map to uh, the ambient manifold where the foliation is. And so here is the curve. And he proposed to do the following. So I will try to deform this morphism in such a way that given a point on the curve, when I deform the morphism, this point will never leave the leaf it starts with, starting. So you can imagine that this is something uh, we are, remember, we are in the algebraic category. It's very unlikely that we are going to be able to do that. And somehow that's where the hypothesis of positivity of the tangent sheave enters, which will allow you to do this kind of deformation, this kind of game. And somehow from that, and using Morris' bend and break argument, he succeeds in producing these, uh, these rational curves. So, you see? Uh, so that's, that's, where I, I, that's the point that I want to say, uh, that, that I want to, to stress, that somehow foliations of small degree are the foliations with positive properties of the tangent sheave or negative properties of the tangent sheave. So it's time to talk about another French-Brazilian collaboration, the collaboration between uh, Araújo and Ruel, uh, where they somehow try to understand what are the most, the, the foliations with the most, with the lowest degree possible. So they somehow uh, started in the problem, at least as far as I understand, uh, motivated by a conjecture of uh, Arnaud Beauville, which comes from the study of symplectic singularities and but uh, obtained a result which is very much in this spirit, description of foliations of low degree. So for them, to, to, to the degree is somehow, it's a measure of the negativity of the canonical bundle. So we have this canonical bundle, this bundle of one forms, and they were, they were interested, they studied the, the case where this canonical bundle is, the anti-canonical bundle, the dual of it is ample. And they introduced this, motivated by, by rational, the, the analog theory for varieties, they, they introduced this measure of the negativity of the canonical bundle. And they somehow, uh, in this paper with uh, Kovacs, they uh, classified the foliations which have the most, the smallest possible degree. So the highest possible index, meaning the smallest possible degree. So these are the uh, foliations of degree zero that we see a couple of slides ago. And again, uh, due to mass signet, they, uh, according to mass signet, they have five papers, but I bet that perhaps this week's already more, and I know that they have more. 
Okay, so this is the first and the fifth in the list of the math sign net. And then they start to uh, study foliations where the index is very large. So this is the, the extreme case. They, they, they look when the index is just one smaller than the maximal case and they have classification, two smaller and so on. So they have uh, really five very nice works on this topic. They do not restrict to co-dimension one though. So, okay, so this is somehow the case of degree zero and one. If you have, we start with this initial picture of foliations on P3, we can look also at these foliations of degree two. And then there is this uh, fantastic work by Frédéric Touze, where he classifies, he gives a complete classification of foliations where the canonical bundle is trivial. He restricts himself to smooth foliations. So, uh, he describes, this is the description. So the description is very easy. Uh, so uh, he proves that they are the linear foliation of, of a torus product with a variety with trivial canonical bundle. Or they are transverse to a P1 bundle and uh, they, 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 they live on a P1 bundle over a variety with trivial canonical bundle and the, the leaves are completely transversal or it's a fibration of uh, hypersurface with trivial canonical bundle. And so this is the complete list. And I have to say I would like to stress that this is a theorem, this is a paper of uh, differential geometry. The methods has nothing to do with the equations. He puts himself in the Keller word and uh, the, the methods is, can say that uh, it's it's differential geometry. So for instance, one of the results that he used, so he has to put a metric with zero reach curvature along the lead. So he uses the Yau theorem for that. And he looks at this paper by Shiga and Homol on the structure of rich flat, on complete rich flat manifolds. He uh, also used a splitting theorem that I've proved with him and uh, Marco Brunella about the universal covering of varieties where the tangent bundle splits. But there, I, I don't want to enter in the detail, but I, I just want to somehow to try to convey the richness of the subject. I would like to stress that this is not an algebraic geometry paper. It's a differential geometry paper. The arguments are differential geometric. Anyway, we pursue this, the study of, uh, of this class of foliations, foliations with trivial canonical bundle, uh, myself together with Frank Lohe and Frédéric Touze. And uh, we try to, uh, we classify these objects. So somehow uh, to classify all these foliations is very hard if you do not tame the singularity. So we had to somehow restrict the case of singularities uh, that are called canonical. But once you restrict to singular foliations on projective manifolds where uh, this with canonical, on projective manifolds and the foliation has canonical singularities, then the, the result is essentially the following is just that uh, the F uh, is defined, so KF0 plus canonical singularities. Then F is defined, the F is defined by the action of an abelian Lie group, of uh, an abelian algebra. So this is billion subalgebra. So this is morally, of course, because uh, you can take quotients of these things and you also can take products of these things by varieties with trivial canonical bundle. But once you do, do that, you do a covering and you factor out the algebraic, uh, the algebraic part of the foliation, what you get is something like this. So. You might be wondering, since uh, I was stressing that uh, the Tuzé's paper is a paper in differential geometry in which uh, works in the Keller setting, why I'm now restricting to projective manifolds, right? So let me just give a very, very, very brief 
a sketch of the proof or an outline of the proof of this result. So somehow we are going to be able to see uh, where uh, projective manifolds arise and why, they, why we had to restrict ourselves to projective manifolds. So the point is that uh, when the, the variety, the ambient variety is not unruled, when there is no rational curve for our general point, we are able to prove that the foliation is smooth. So this is a bit of analysis. Hodge theory and the uh, results of books on the Maid, Paup, and Ternel, and we can get, we get for free the regularity of the foliation, and we uh, can uh, use to the results to conclude. But the point is that uh, there are foliations with trivial canonical bundle, uh, and then we prove that the foliation is defined by conservation of form, and, but there are foliations with trivial canonical bundle in unruled manifolds. And so when the, the foliation is unruled, so we have not only curves which deform, but we also have uh, rational curves which deform on the foliation. So we somehow use the rational curves and this idea of the forming the morphisms along the foliation of Miyaoka to uh, tame the transverse structure of the foliation. This is unfortunately is not sufficient to conclude. So what we also do, and that's where we need the projective, we use a reduction mod P methods so one wonderful thing of the algebraic world is that everything is defined by equations, and the equations have coefficients, and coefficients define rings, and rings can be reduced mod by prime ideals, and you can try to uh, study these things in, uh, in fi over finite fields, and try to then lift information that you deduce algebraically from them. And so from this study of the reduction mod P of the foliation, we can obtain more information, which when we put together, we deduce that this uh, foliation has nice singularities and it's transversely projective, and we can uh, prove that it's uh, close to the rational form. So again, so here is where we need projectiveness assumption. We need to be able to do uh, algebraic geometry. Anyway, so I w what, what I would like to, to say a bit more is about this uh, technique of uh, looking at uh, the formation of morphisms, which starts from the work of uh, Miyaoka. And let me talk about another work with uh, uh, Frank Lohé in Frédéric Touzé. It's more recent. And where we somehow uh, refined the, the, the study that we did in this first paper, in this paper on, on the classification of foliations with uh, trivial canonical bundle. And uh, we look at this. So let me try to give a little bit more details and to try to, to explain this, this result. So the situation is the following. So I have this. I have this ambient variety X. And I have a foliation on it. Co-dimension one. And now I'm going to look at an irreducible component of the space of morphisms, of maps from P1 to X, of P1 to X. Okay, so a point here is a map, F. So there is a kind of, there is a universal family of this over this variety. And this is just, I can look at now, if I have here a, a kind of global evalu evaluation morphism. And so to, to this map, to this guy, I have a, a map and which we have some image here. Okay. And so we look at the following. We look what uh, somehow was already suggested by by the work of Miyaoka. So we, we define from F, which is a foliation here, we define a foliation here on the space of morphisms, what we should call F tang as F tangential. And uh, so what this foliation does, so it somehow the leaves are the maximal sub-varieties in M, such that uh, when I look 
at the image of points in P1 and I move along the leaf, so here I, I, I'm really looking at the product of M times P1, so it makes sense of talking about horizontal. I want that this horizontal, when I look the horizontal through the evaluation motions, it never leaves the leaf it starts with. And this is happening for every single point. So this process defines a foliation. So this is a foliation, uh, as I said, F time, and I can look at a, a leaf. And so this space is an algebraic space, it's an algebraic variety, or at least M, the reducible component. So we can talk about algebraicity of leaves, and we can take Zariski closures, and somehow, when I take the Zariski closure of this guy, it's very restricted. So if uh, the Zariski closure, it will have, uh, the dimension will be at most the dimension of L plus three. And these numbers which appear are very much, are not, they not appear by, by chance, so dimension of L bar is equal to dimension of L plus delta. And this delta is at most three. And so three, what are these guys? This three is the dimension of SL2Z. See? The most general Lie, finite dimensional Lie algebra that acts on, on one dimensional space. And uh, this three is just because this, you have this kind of transverse structure, we have the foliation, the, the leaf space of the foliation is model over SL2. When we have that uh, delta is equal to two, the foliation is transversally affine. And, uh, the, and when delta is equal to one, the foliation is transversally Euclidean. And the, what is very nice is that this is a, is, is a if and only if. But what we have to say that this is a result which does not hold for any single, in general, it, it's a kind of empty result. For a general foliation, this foliation that we define in F time will be a foliation by points. We are not going to be able to deform. We cannot deform any morphism. It's hair that we can deform more. But anyway, for foliations of small degree, we can do that. Very good. And so uh, that's, uh, that's something. And uh, when, the, so this is very general, right? So this is a, this is a result which uh, holds for every single unruled manifold, and we get this conclusion. And it puts no assumption on the geometry of the rational curve. So one example of a unruled manifold is just you take any manifold whatsoever, Y, let's say, which can be a manifold without algebraic curves at all, and we consider the product with P1. And so we have here only a, a one, one param uh, dimension of Y family of rational curves, and the, the way that we can move them is very strict. So this is something very different from PN. In PN, if I have a rational curve, if I have a line, I can move it in any single direction. Here, I not, I'm constrained. So, uh, we are able to do a bootstrapping argument uh, using this result to, uh, under conditions which are satisfied by PN, we are able to show that this transversely projective case never happens. From transversely projective, we are able to, uh, using that the curves move everywhere, we are able to pass to transversally affine, and again, using that curves move everywhere, we are able to pass through transversally Euclidean. And so uh, this allows us to start uh, to, to go to this foliation defined by uh, closed uh, rational forms. Okay, very good. So this is starting to get a little bit too abstract and uh, perhaps uh, kind of lost all of you. 
But uh, the point is that uh, with this kind of result, we can go back to our initial problem. We can go back to the pro to, uh, we can try to interpret this result in the original case of P3. So what, this what does this imply for foliations on P3? So the last case where we can guarantee that always, it's always possible to deform morphisms is for foliations of degree three. So for foliations of degree three, uh, co-dimension one on P3, using the previous result, we can prove uh, this kind of classification. So F is defined by a closed ratio on one form without co-dimension one zeros. So this is very close to be one of these logarithmic differentials that were in the beginning of the talk. Or there exists a foliation of degree one, a foliation by curves of degree one everywhere tangent to our original foliation, and this foliation is bialgebraic leaves. Or it's a linear pullback. Or F admits a rational function. Every leaf is algebraic. So this is not sufficient to, uh, to give a complete list of irreducible components in degree three but we are trying to, and uh, we have, so far we have this kind of statement. So in degree three, there are at least 28 irreducible components, and uh, it somehow appeared that a surprise for us that among these 28 components, at least 12 are not generically reduced, in the sense that this Zariski tangent space of omega wedge d omega is not the actual tangent space for these components. So this is a, w a work in progress with uh, Rafael Constant and uh, Ruben Lizardi, a former student of uh, Nins Neto and a former student of mine. And somehow we get this. So far we have this list. And uh, just to give, a, I'm not going to read the list for you. Uh, but I'm just to give them a, an idea how these different cases of the previous theorem are there. So we have one case which is a linear pullback. We have this case which are just these logarithmic components, no surprise there. So the case where we have really a lot of different situations is this two. And then there is this two uh, extra case where you have rational first integral and do not fit in, in the previous description. So one, the, the ironical thing here is that uh, for foliations of degree three, the real hard case, or at least for this problem, the real hard case is where the, when there is no dynamics at all. So the case where we are not able to understand is the case where we do have rational first integral. Uh, so that's what we did, right? So we started with this uh, paper of uh, Joan Ulu and talk about, uh, then discuss the Stevolins Neto, and I'm trying to put here somehow this, uh, the, 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 the logical connections between the subject to, to give an idea of uh, how this place are related one to each other. So I think it's really uh, the, 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 the paper which, which connect to each other and uh, give an, uh, somehow an idea of kind of problems uh, that we are looking at. But uh, this is not uh, the, the whole history, of course. This is just a really, really specific uh, part, a small part of the subject of foliation theory. And I have to say that there is one thing that I have to mention is that this, uh, this foliation theory uh, had a lot of progress in the case of foliations on surfaces. We are looking at co-dimension one in higher dimension, but in in dimension two, there is a complete classification of foliations by on surface. So here there is no integrability conditions. Again, a classification in function of the properties of the canonical bundle. So the first, I think, that wrote something about the subject was uh, Luis Gustavo Mendes, just after his PhD thesis here at IMPA with Vince Neto. Then a complete classification appeared in the work of uh, Michael McQuillan. Uh, uh, and uh, to do that, uh, this very, it came out as surprising. The, the classification is very similar to the classification of projective surface, but there are some uh, very, very important uh, differences. And one difference is that the, the so-called abundance conjecture does not hold, and uh, there, are f there are foliations which look like they should have 
one forms along leaves, but they don't. These are uh, this is the hard part of the classification, and it becomes a piece, a very beautiful piece of uh, analysis, of geometric analysis by Marco Brunella, where he uh, considered general foliation, a foliation on, uh, of by curves in any projective manifold or in any compact Keller manifold, and you, he assumes that the general leaf is a disk or is uniformized by the disk. He puts Poincaré metric on each leaf, and he proves that the variation, the transversal variation of this metric is very subharmonic. So this is kind of uh, in the direct heritage of the uniformization theorem. I think it's really, really a wonderful, uh, wonderful indeed theorem. And uh, if you are curious about how the thing in dimension two goes, uh, there is this uh, nice book uh, by Marco Brunella. Chen is not happy. I think he likes more the old, uh, the old uh, cover, and uh, where this, uh, these ideas are explained. Uh, when he wrote that book, the, the theory was not complete. There was not. Uh, this, he had not proved yet this sub. Uh, sub the subharmonic variation of the leafwise point hybrid metric, but uh, I think it's even more interesting because somehow he, he, he discussed what conjecturally, how the proof should work conjecturally, and uh, what ideas should play a role, and it's nice to, to, to see that you know, math, math being constructed. Uh, anyway, but at this point you might wonder, well, so it looks like you are without a job, right? So. Degree one, it was easy. Two was hard, but not that much. Three it seems to be a little bit complicated. What you are going to do next? Degree four, so it doesn't seem like it, right? And the point is that somehow there is one uh, a conjecture, a conjecture description of uh, foliations of codimension one that I would like to 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 explain. So at least in the subject of codimension one foliations, of course you can try to do the MMP, and that's being done in dimension three by Calvin Spicer. Uh, but there is also this uh, old conjecture, oh, well, not so old, but a conjecture that I've learned while I was doing my PhD in hand. And, and so this uh, somehow starts with a question of Brunella. So he asks, looking at the list, looking at the foliations that we know on the projective space, uh, he, he asks if every codimension one foliation on pre free either has an invariant algebraic curve or uh, is the rational pullback of a foliation on dimension two. And somehow this question was extrapolated and became a conjecture by Servo and his neto, uh, and then saying that uh, every codimension one foliation on any freefold, indeed in any projective manifold, is either transversely projective meaning that it's very, very, very uh, highly structured transversely, or it comes from a surface. And uh, uh, it, it's kind of a very bold conjecture, so essentially saying that dynamics in quadrimension one comes only from dimension two. And I, I used to believe less in this conjecture, and I believe more and more, and there is, uh, a few reasons for that. There are some partial results, so somehow this conjecture, this, this paper is, uh, precedes the conjecture, but it's a paper which somehow was uh, influential. It's a very simple work where uh, Servo uh, looks at uh, pencil of foliations. He, he takes two foliations and he assumes that the, the linear combination of form defined then also are also integrable, so he verifies this conjecture in this case. And somehow extrapolating and generalizing this result is where uh, my collaboration with this uh, French people started. So it's a joint paper of uh, Servo, Lins Neto, myself, uh, Frank Loré, and Frédéric Touze. And somehow we tried to do what we could with uh, variations of that, with that argument. And uh, I would like to just finish mention also this uh, there, there are other, other, other indications of this, that this conjecture might be true. So let me just explain uh, this, uh, this last work, is, which is a work at, uh, which I, it somehow started while Benoit Claudon was uh, visiting INPA from this uh, French uh, 
from the CNR, as a CNRS, uh, through the CNRS uh, agreement. So he spent one year here. So in this, this result somehow says uh, it's not, perhaps not very so good evidence, but it somehow is an infinitesimal version of that conjecture. So let's start with uh, X and quasi-projective manifold. <coughs> And so this X has to be thought as a leaf, as algebraic leaf of one of these co-dimensional one foliations. And if that's the case, this, uh, this X comes with a gadget which is called the holonomy of representation. So somehow it's the infinitesimal uh, or the, the local, it somehow captures the local picture of the foliation around X and it's uh, representation on the group of diff C0. So I, I will not discuss any analysis, so it's really not important to look at uh, diffs of C0. You can look at really formal diffeomorphisms of C0. So this is a, it's a nice group. And uh, assume that the uh, whole is not virtually abelian, so the image is not virtually abelian, so if you are, if you are in one of that, uh, on this transversely projective cases, so the holonomy will be uh, very close to that, will be virtually abelian or will be transversely affine, but uh, let's just assume that's not a virtually abelian, then the I cannot say that the foliation comes from a surface, but we can say that this representation comes from a curve. Then uh, there exists a factorization of the holonomy representation of this representation. Doesn't need to be uh, doesn't need to be the holonomy representation through a curve. Uh, orbit curve. Which somehow says that, well, uh, this would be a consequence of a conjecture like that, and uh, but this, that, that at least this consequence uh, could be, could be uh, verified. Okay, so that's what I want to discuss. Thank you for the attention.